Harold here and welcome to the channel. Today it's all about big blocks and not just any big block, a blown big block on pump gas. In this video you get to follow along as we take a blown big block boat motor, put it up on the dyno here at West Tech, tune it, run boost, all on pump gas. So how much power does it make? Let's find out. Okay, fit. So now it looks like everything's ready. We're gonna start it up. We've gotta break this thing in. We'll ease into it. Just the fuel, just the timing, and make some power runs. Get things started, we put the 540 obviously up on the dyno and I'll go ahead and go through a description here. This was a 540 inch stroker big block Chevy. It was a low compression version, 8.25 to one, because it was gonna be used in a boat application. They usually run you know, lower static compression. They run for a long time with a lot of throttle. So low compression is not a bad idea for a marine application. This particular one had forged internals. It had a forged scat crank and matching forged rods. It also had JE forged pistons. Topping that thing off with a set of Airflow Research 345 heads, which are more than enough. I mean, you can make a lot of power with a 345 head. Those are more than big enough for the power level, especially since they were having positive pressure applied to them. This thing had a, a rather, you know, fairly mild camshaft for a 540. It was a hydraulic roller, and since they weren't running a lot of, uh, you know, a ton of engine speed on it, it was 655 lift, a 246-250 degree duration split at 50, and then 114 degree load separation angle. This thing was run with an 871 blower, and you can take a look at the pulley sizes here. So the blower pulley was 43 teeth, and the crank pulley was a 51 tooth, so that uh, they're saying that that's about 13% over. Now feeding this supercharged application was were two uh, Brawler 750s, although I thought that um, Bostic said that they were both 850s. Now he had modified these, uh, further modified these Brawler carburetors to be boost reference, so that worked out very well. And uh, normally as we do on the engine dyno, we ran these with two and a quarter inch dyno headers with no mufflers and they, they did have collector extensions on them. 
We ran with a Mazir electric water pump. This thing had a big, deep marine pan. In fact, I think he was saying that it was like a 10-quart pan. We didn't run that much in it, and as I'll show you here, we actually ended up taking oil out of it to improve the oil pressure curve at the top, and we definitely improved power when we did that. So we started off with 28 degrees of total timing. The distributor was locked on this particular application, and we ran it all on just 91 pump gas from a local station, so California 91 swill, but it obviously worked out good. The blower, the 871 blower, was also feeding pressurized air through an air to water intercooler, and on that we ran dyno water as we normally do. So run in this configuration, it made between seven and a half and eight pounds of boost run in this configuration and we only ran it to 6,000 RPM in this case because we were kind of just getting started before we started adjusting the timing and, and fuel and stuff, but it made 880 horsepower. Peak torque was right at the load in of around 4,000 RPM where it made 853 horsepower. So this was our get starting point and the first thing that we did was Obviously, we wanted to try more timing. Now, they've run this kind of combination before and know exactly what that is. So let's take a listen to the run, and then we'll get back and show you what the timing did. One thing you have to say, those big blower motors sound awesome <laughs> at speed. Big blower going, they're making boost, they're making power. So we started things off making 880 horsepower and 853 foot-pounds of torque with the timing at 28 degrees. And as you saw in the video, James went out and adjusted, put about two more degrees in it for a total of 30 degrees timing. And that kind of seemed to be where these things run. We've run a lot of them on the dyno and these boosted combinations on these big blocks with that kind of cylinder head on there seem to work pretty well at uh, closer to 30 degrees of timing and obviously you want to be careful when you're running pump gas um you know running we start getting up uh, near too much timing and boost and stuff but the nice thing that this thing had going for it is and part of the reason that it could run on 91 octane is one it had low static compression and it also had enough camshaft to further lower the dynamic compression it had good aluminum heads on it. We are obviously running cold water through it. It had an air to water intercooler. And as the finishing touch, you also have fuel from the carburetors going through the blower, which also reduces the charge temperature. So all those things combine to allow you to get away with quite a bit uh, with only 91 octane. But here's what happened when we increased the static timing from 28 degrees to 30 degrees. And then we also revved it up a little bit higher as you can see, but we picked up, uh, we increased the timing everywhere. So we see, you can see we saw a big gain everywhere. Peak torque was up to 868 foot pounds and we're at 838 there, 856. So we're picking up almost 20 foot pounds of torque. This combination ended up producing 899.1 horsepower. So you can see the power was up quite a bit. It's revving all the way out to 6,500. So the next test that we did, we, we noticed that there was a little bit of a discrepancy or a discrepancy, a little bit of a problem maybe with the oil pressure curve at the top. It start, was starting to fall off. So what we did was, and this is normally the case, we will increase um, the amount of oil that's in it just to make sure that it's not an oil starvation problem because that's the safe way to do it. And then if things get worse, what we'll start doing is taking oil pressure away. So let's hear another run and then show you what happened when we started adjusting the oil level.
So this is where our start. This is our starting point at 28 degrees of timing on our blown big block. Here's what happened when we went up to 30 degrees of total timing. And then the final test that we did, as you saw from the video, we actually, uh, James went out and took about uh, maybe a full quart out of this thing. And he ha he originally had nine and a half in it and then uh, brought it down to eight and a half quarts total in the system. And it definitely had a definite effect on the oil pressure curve, but here's what it did to the power. And this is from just taking oil out of the crankcase. So the red is the new combination with less oil. So we, what happens is there's a lot of windage, you get aerated oil, it makes the, it makes the hydraulic roller lifters not um, operate as effectively as they otherwise could. And you can see it, it had the biggest difference at the top of the power curve. So now the power was all the way up to 917 horsepower. Peak torque was up, you know, just uh, just a smidge there um, in the lower RPM ranges. Like, as I said, most of the gains were at the top of the rev range. And that's where the oil pressure problems become most problematic. As you go up in engine speed, the windage gets worse, the aeration gets worse, and then you start getting, you know, you start having problems with it. But after this was cured, um, this thing is ready to install in a boat and go make some noise. Okay guys, what did we learn from this little adventure running this blown big block from Bostic Racing Engines? Well, we learned the following things. Blown big blocks, lots of displacement, big blower, carburetors, intercooler, low compression, all combined to allow a combination to make over 900 horsepower easily on pump gas. That's why big blocks are so awesome. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.